Hi guys, I'm Gesha. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to our Goffy Times. Today with more horror content for you. So just this morning, actually, that's how new, how fresh these news are. Just this morning, I was tagged on Twitter by uh, book tag Your It. I'm gonna leave all the info down below as always in the box, but they have created this new horror book tag, the Spoopy Book Tag, and it is all about horror. And there is a list of 13 questions so we have a lot to dig into a lot to talk about I'm going to leave the information of the Twitter account that created the tag down below as well as the questions so that in case you would like to do this tag yourself you have all the info you need it's coffee time So let's start with the questions, shall we? And since the questions are fairly long, I'm going to be reading them out loud to you to make sure that I formulate them properly. So the first one is a book that scared you while you were actively reading the words on the pages. For this one, I'm going to be choosing Desperation by Stephen King from 1996. This is a reading experience I'm never going to forget. I even remember in which room this happened. I'm getting emotional because this was one of my favorite Stephen King books for this specific reason. So I was reading the book um, and I remember even the position I was reading it in my bed. I was sitting in my bed in summer in our summer apartment and at the beach and I was sitting on top of my bed my back was facing the door of my bedroom and as I was reading the book I got like legit real goosebumps and I've never really had that experience with a book until that point and for me um you know that really made a connection between me and Stephen King like even though I was already enjoying his books like that moment is one of the greatest reading experiences I've ever had so of course I will have to choose this book this book is about um a town that it's kind of deserted now and it's called Desperation so in this town um people like to visit it as a vacation uh, kind of a place to go to um, and we're following different characters that are traveling to the town of desperation and one of them of course it's a writer which you know guys Stephen King loves to include writers in his stories it's a way of writing himself into the book and there is also a very very special cop that still works around the area so that's all I'm gonna be telling you um, it's one of my favorites I haven't read it in ages i probably you know read this book like years ago probably over 15 years ago i don't even know and um i think i should really revisit it i do have a copy hold on so here's my copy and this cover is also one of my favorites from the stephen king book covers it is just so stunning and i definitely should reread this book because it's been one of my favorites from Stephen King since the moment I read it and it's been a long time. All right, let's move to number two, a book that you didn't find scary while reading it, but after you had the time to think about it and sit with it, you became frightened, scared, or creeped out. For this one, I'm going to be choosing The Girl Next Door by Jack Ketchum from 1989. So this is based in a suburbia neighborhood where, you know, the lawns look pretty nice. Everything should be like signs of a good life. However, it is a nightmare for Meg and her sister, uh, her crippled sister Susan. They are being held captive in their aunt's basement. Um, and when you read this book if you can get through it because let me tell you it is very intense it is very disturbing and it gets really hard to read at times um however it was not until i finished the book and i started thinking about the fact that the book is inspired by real events this is a true crime story and then it starts to kind of really hit you that the things that were described in the book were probably really close to what happened in real life and it kind of haunts you a little bit 
Number three, a book that was so creepy that you still think about a scene from it years later. So it's not really been years, <laughs> well not that many, but um, basically I chose for this one Endless Night by Richard Lehman from 1993 um, because there were some scenes and some things that our villains do in this book that were extremely disgusting kind of those things that you just want to rip your skin apart because it's kind of making you feel gross and i still think about those scenes um so endless night about it's about jody she's a 16 year old that is spending the night at her best friend's house kind of like a sleepover situation until in the middle of the night some strangers kind of just like going to the house you know it's a home invasion kind of story at the beginning and they start killing everybody that is in the house but she's one of the lucky ones that makes it out alive and after that it all goes downhill for her <laughs> honestly and at the beginning i was like yeah you know a home invasion kind of you know horror story but everything gets so fucked up it gets like so messed up um that there are still a lot of things that i am thinking about so i always compare kind of like the gross villain moments in this book to the texas chainsaw massacre i'm talking about the original film um and if you read the book you know why and the first time that i watched the texas chainsaw massacre it really had an impact on me and it really still haunts me so it's always going to be one of my favorite horror movies just because it had an impact on me um so if you liked the film um you can you know give this book a try number four is a book that you couldn't finish because it was either too creepy or too gory now i've never had to stop reading a book because it was too creepy for me or too gory for me um if i'm reading a book that for whatever reason it doesn't even have to be horror it's maybe just a topic or something is triggering for me um what i would do is if i still like the book it's just that it might be triggering or it might be very intense um i might just read it slower i will give myself you know only like 20 pages a day or something that it's doable for me um and this is actually what i do fun fact with japanese horror video games i love them but some of them are so intense for me and for my heart <laughs> that i just take them just a little bit every day um it's funny because when it comes to horror movies i have never really faced any horror film that was too much for me and i had to stop it or something like that but with horror video games i guess because you're kind of in control um i always feel so uncomfortable <laughs> And I always have to like play just a little bit at a time. So if I ever encounter a book that might be a little bit too much, I think I would just divide it in like 20 pages a day or something that's comfortable for me. Number five, the scariest, creepiest book you've read based on a cult or a group of people with sinister values or goals. For this one, I'm going to choose Harvest Home by Thomas Tryon from 1973. So this is also a fairly old one um and in this book we find a couple that is used to living in the city but they decide to move to the countryside and they end up basically in the middle of a harvesting kind of ritual and they start to realize that they might not make it out of there alive now the book is hard to find i've been trying to find a paperback of this for the longest time and i still haven't but maybe one day I'll be able to add it to the collection. Number six, a horror book that takes place in an otherworldly location. Here I chose The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. And Neil Gaiman is not an author for everybody, but I do enjoy his unique writing and storytelling. And this is kind of horror combined with fantasy. And I really enjoyed it. It's also kind of like a quick read. And we're following here a guy that um, goes back to his childhood home for a funeral and then he starts to revisit things from his past. He used to know this girl that was there with her mom and grandma and he revisits the stories that this girl was telling him, like fantastic stories. And we get ourselves into a very kind of weird magical slash horror adventure and i just really enjoyed the whole 
kind of story behind it. Uh, but like I said, it's very, you know, it, it depends if you like Neil Gaiman or not. Number seven, a horror book where the main character or characters have to be or do something horrific in order to do what they deem as right or necessary. So this one I'm kind of stretching a little bit um, because it's not like they have to do a horrific act, but here I'm going to mention another one of my absolute favorite Stephen King books. Yes, I'm a little bit biased. I just love him so much. Um, and that is Needful Things from 1992. So here is my old copy of the book. Um, and this book um, is also one of my favorites just because of the concept of the book. We have this new shop that opens in a small town and um, everybody that enters the shop finds exactly the object that they need or, or that they've been looking for for so long. And the price seems to be really easy to pay. They just have to perform a deed. They just have to do a favor. Um, and they think it's something really like meaningless, something that it's not an act of violence or something like that. However, every little thing, every little prank that they do has consequences. So before you know it, the whole town is kind of fighting each other and there are violent acts going on and the police needs to intervene. So it just escalates. <laughs> um, and I really, really loved it. Number eight, your favorite horror book that takes place in the summer. Here I have for you a book from 2018 and that is Kill Hill Carnage by Tim Meyer. Now this book might not be perfect but it was a lot of fun and it has everything nearly in the horror genre. We have gore, we have a creature feature, we have teenage drama, we have um, some kind of 80s vibe horror as well to it. And it was just a lot of fun. So the main story is based on a summer camp. That's what I chose it as the summer horror book. Um, in 1991, a sur summer horror camp for kids. Um, basically, um, they all get slaughtered and the camp is drenched in blood and nobody really knows exactly what happened that day. Um, but 25 years later, there is a hitman that is sent to tie loose ants because there is this secret factory that is also on the area. And while he get, when he gets there, he finds that there are some campers, some teenagers are camping there because they also want to figure out what happened that night. And yeah, let's say that things turn very wrong for them. Let's go to number nine, a horror book that felt like you were actually watching or reading the script for a classic horror movie. And for this one, I chose a really new release from this year, from 2020, and that is The Deep by Alma Katsu. Um, this is a book that it has such an old atmosphere like you're really being transported back back to 1912 and 1916 um and you're reliving the titanic and the britannica stories that is basically what the book is about this was a really slow paced nice gothic story the only thing that i was missing from this book was a little bit more of scares a little bit more of creepiness something that would make me feel more like that something is happening, something more like unsettling. Um, but the story, the background, the characters, everything was so atmospheric that I think this would work wonderfully as a film. In this book, we're following the main character that's a girl that was working on the Titanic in 1912. And there were a lot of unsettling things happening on the ship. And a lot of people started to believe that there was a supernatural presence in the ship. And we also follow her story a couple of years later in 1916 when she's on board of the Britannica. Um, so like I said, I really love the atmosphere that this book had and the character development, their background stories, everything was just so interesting that, you know, I just would have hoped it would have had a little bit more of horror um, because that was what I was expecting as well. But I think maybe if they would turn this into a movie, it would really work because of the whole atmosphere that the story has. Number 10, a book that's not scared to utilize modern technology, for example, mobile phones, internet, social media, robotics, etc. So I found it really hard 
to find a horror book that I had read and really enjoyed that combined horror with um, technology um, in general because I don't think there are way too many out there in comparison to other kind of genres. I think it's something relatively new to the book community. I think in movies it's kind of taking a faster pace right now, especially we just got the movie last year, Countdown, which has to do with an app that tells you when you're gonna die. Not the best movie ever, but hey, they're trying to combine technology with horror. We also have Bedevil, which was not good at all either. Um, so I find these movies are really trying hard and I think one of the maybe reasons why we don't get so many horror stories combined with technology is I think a lot of us are having a harder time to get scared with those stories for whatever reason. Um, so I remember though that I read a book that did combine technology in a way in the book and I thought that was actually really smart and really well executed and that is this book here, Security by Gina Wolsdorf. I think they did a really great job to bring something fresh, something new to the horror genre and we have here a hotel, a resort that is about to open its doors and it's promised to be the most you know, secure hotel, the safest one with security cameras everywhere, with a team of security people there ready and, and anything that can happen. Um, and the some of the staff members are there the last days before the big opening uh, to make sure that everything is, you know, ready for the big opening. And what they don't know is that they are all being watched by someone. So there is a killer on the loose in the hotel. And apart from the deaths being fantastic in this book, um, you get to see sometimes, you know, you're, you're getting the story told from the different perspectives of the different security cameras. Um, and that is so smart. I want to show to you how that looks like. So you will have here a column with what you can see from one camera, from one perspective. And here is another perspective from another room in the hotel that it's happening at the same time. So it's as if you would be like in the security room watching the different cameras and you can see what's going on in different rooms. And I thought that was so genius. And it was, it was a great reading experience because it was something different. Let's move on to Eleven, a horror book that was written before the year 2000 that you felt was ahead of its time. And here I chose American Psycho by Brett Easton Ellis from 1999. We follow Patrick Bateman, um, a 26 year old, very successful Wall Street guy um, that turns into a psychopath. Um, and it is being told that what drove him insane was to be stuck in this culture of consumerism and feeling worse and worse about it. So I think there is many things in Patrick Bateman that, you know, we could still relate to our times right now, um, especially this culture that we have of consuming and consuming. And then we feel bad because we spend so much money on things or because we can stop ourselves from consuming, from buying, uh, from browsing through websites to buy things. Like it, it, it kind of, you enter in this loop where you feel bad about it, but you cannot stop yourself. It's not like we all become psychopaths. <laughs> because that, that that would be a thing you know imagine a horror book in which people have no control and they cannot stop themselves from consuming things and they all lose their minds and they go kind of berserker on each other just just putting it out there okay anyways i just thought that the concept of the book is something that could be applied still to our culture and to our society nowadays um and also the movie was fantastic please watch the movie if you haven't watched it yet Number 12, a book that you feel greatly changed or influenced the horror genre for years to come. I don't think there is a specific book, but I do want to say that basically Lovecraft kind of started um, a lot of the horror that we have nowadays. He inspired modern writers like Stephen King. He was a big influence for him. And also in the 1970s, 
um, we got a lot of you know the writers that were going to influence the contemporary horror literature we had Stephen King, Anne Rice, Clive Barker, um, Paul Straub like a lot of people that have influenced what we have today um, so I think more than a specific book I would say is specific writers that through the years have been kind of you know influencing the horror genre and we have made it you guys to the very last question and that is a horror book that is so unique that you've yet to come across anything like it for this one i chose pontypool changes everything by tony burgess from 1998 so actually i first discovered the movie pontypool and it became one of my favorite zombie films because it was so unique and then I discovered it had a book so I had to check it out um, and the book is also as unique and different and strange and weird but strange in the good way you have to imagine we're talking here about a virus that is being spread through word through language and so that is such a fresh nice take on the overly explored and used topic of zombies in a horror genre so I thought it was you know the, the writing of this book is so special just because they can play with words so much and it is such an interesting concept so if you like kind of books that are really different um you might really want to check this one out you're following the life of different people that are trying to uh, survive their way through this epidemic that it's happening this virus um, and I absolutely loved the book because it was just so crazy, insane, and different. Um, and I also really, really loved the movie as well. So, you know, you can do a book slash a movie. Uh, and yeah, it's one of my favorite uh, zombie stories. All right, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this horror book tag. Remember, I'm going to leave down below the info on the creators of the tag, as well as all the questions in case that you want to answer them yourself. If you do the tag, please leave me the link to your video down below so I make sure to check it out. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. Always appreciate your support. Please, before you leave, consider giving this video a big thumbs up to support. And also, if you want to follow me on you know, the social media, as always, all the links are down below and i hope to see you all of you in the next coffee time bye